Hey everyone, this is Chris Keys for Premier Guitar. Today I'm at Marathon Music Works in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm rejoined by the gentleman, yes, pun intended, I am leaning into the dad life even though I'm not a father. Uh, I got the dad jokes aplenty. I'm here with Jake Bowen. Jake, how are you doing? Pretty good. How are you doing? Doing real well. We are recapping your guys' setups. I know some, some things will be the same, but differently, specifically to you, is this beautiful 27 fret machine. Yeah. Tell me about it. This is the Ibanez JBM quadruple nine so that's four nines okay <laughs> like we're joking off camera i was like that's like a law firm like are you been injured in a and semi-accident called nine 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 yeah nine, we're nine. doing our best like better call Saul. yeah commercials um so uh just a quick little intro to that that model number it's uh it's a final fantasy reference so if you play final uh -huh. fantasy that is the max damage you can get in the earlier game so that's i wanted to, I, I didn't think they were actually going to go for it and i was like let me see if they'll do this they're they're ibanez is a japanese company maybe they'll get it yeah and they were like yeah let's do it so well i mean ibanez is definitely not afraid of numbers if you've seen yeah. their catalog when it comes to model numbers that's so. right yeah it's <laughs> like uh you need an encyclopedia just to find your way through their yes. catalog but um, but uh, give me the details of this beautiful machine sure i'm gonna try my best because there's a lot going on here and uh i'm not the brightest but uh <laughs> we have um we have an rgd i'm not rgd rga for the arch top body style and um ibanez has doing, been doing this body style for a really long time and i've it's kind of like something that i've adopted as kind of my own thing all my signatures have an arch top to it um it's 27 frets it has a reverse headstock. It has um, a basswood body. It has a ebony fretboard, maple neck, goto locking tuners, okay? A Gibraltar Elite Bridge. And um, kind of the centerpiece of this guitar is my new set of DiMarzio signature pickups. These are called the Mirage. Um, I don't know if, I think they might've been announced already. We, we're still working on like kind of the launch and everything. We can mm -hmm. we can talk about it though. It's been long enough. Spilling the beans here, at PG. <laughs> yeah. um, but what we have here is a medium to hot output humbucker, and we also have a neck pickup that is a hot rail. So basically, it's a humbucker in a single coil size. And the reason why I did that is because I've always liked this configuration on guitars, but generally you'll have a single coil in here. So I wanted people to have the option to take this out if they didn't, if they wanted to put a single coil in this guitar, they could definitely do that. Pragmatic. Yeah, um, and then maybe some other things to mention about it is that it has uh, Luminlay side dots, which are really nice for dark stages. And um, yeah, that's about it. It has 20, 27 frets and... Back to the pickups real quick, yeah. Jake. Is uh, how would you say sonically they sit with the, uh, your previous set that which we'll probably see again here in a minute is the Titan. How is that so compared? I'm I'm a pretty big fan of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But <laughs> obviously you grow and you kind of like figure out things and little imperfections that you wanted to correct over a model that you were really really happy with. Mm. So I still play guitars that have my titans in them and i'll never take those out they're yeah. just amazing pickups but like as the years went on i was like oh maybe i change this about that or change so basically what you're getting is you're getting a titan with a different slightly different eq configuration and a different output so i feel like these have a little bit more of an aggressive compressed sound don't have to pick as hard to kind of get that pickup to push when you when you're playing through high gain um and uh other than that, not too much is different. The other, there's a cosmetic change too, where we decided to do these two little vents, um, kind of rep reminiscent of like a hot rod or a muscle car yeah. or something, you know. Um, that's kind of what the aesthetic for this guitar is based on. You know, it's kind of like a, you know, it's got the white binding and kind of like the Mustang blue. And, yeah. and then I thought it'd be cool to do like a, you know, a vented pickup cover. Now I assume that's a master volume. Yes, and just which, the volume. Should we know about the switching here? Because it looks like a five-way, but two pickups. So how we? How's that going? Yeah, so um, it's it's almost the same as like a standard Ibanez wired five-way switch. Um, this is obviously going to be your bridge position. This is my favorite position right here. This this I don't know if you'd call it the second or the fourth. Probably the second. So first. Yeah. This one being first. This one being the the fifth. But um, let's say it's the second position. But what it's what's really nice is it splits the two pickups to their, you know, just the single coil in oh. each one. And so something that's handy about that is when the guys are playing on their rhythm channel and we're all playing the same thing, I'll actually move to that pickup. So that way I get that kind of strat, like real bright pushed mm. sound. And uh, it really binds with the guitar is great. And so you have the bass and the guitars and then I switch to that. It's just kind of this really full 
uh, sound for, for rhythm playing. So it yeah. allows you to kind of stick out a little bit yeah. in the guitar me that you guys have here. Yeah, it kind of adds a like kind of a unique flavor to you know just regular rhythm playing. Yeah. yeah. What should we know about strings and gauges? Yes. Um, so I have a string, a signature string pack coming out with Horizon strings. Oh, congrats. Thank you very much. And um, so I have a six string pack and I have a seven string pack. But on this guitar, I have a, a 10 to 58 set and we have the gauges here. It's a 10, a 14, a 17, a 31, a 43 and a 58. Yeah, I was saying uh, I've never seen a 10 to 58 set. So yeah. how did you land on those numbers? So I, um, I built a Evertune bridge version of this guitar in the LA Custom Shop. All right. And um, we play in this tuning, which is down a whole step, but the low string is down even further to a G. So these two strings are G. So you can imagine as you keep going down, you're gonna, the intonation is gonna be all over the is place. Is that for Reptile? For Reptile, yes, yeah. exactly. And uh, in Zagreus, we, okay. we wrote another song in that tuning. And um, so you need like a heavier gauge string to accommodate for that really low G. Um, but it really shines on the Evertune. But you can use it on, on uh, just a normal bridge guitar too as well. So that's what I decided on. Before we meet some of me, uh, your other mean marauders, what landed on the, why the 27 fret? Is it something that came up during the creation of Periphery 5? Um, I've been playing a LA Custom Shop version of this guitar for a long time. And um, way back when we started playing the song called Mile Zero, there was a, a, we had a guest guitar player on it. Uh, named Wes Hauk and he wrote a solo on it and at the time he was using a 27 fret guitar so I was like when I was building the LA custom shop I'm like well just see if we can do a 27 fret because then I can actually kind of play it a little bit more true to form yeah I'll never be able to play it as good as him so <laughs> just putting that out monster there right player. now monster player um but uh but yeah so they they did it and I just kind of stuck with it. You know, I, I incorporated it into one of, one of my own solos on Periphery 4, but other than that, I haven't really explored too much of the 27th fret, but I, I intend to. <laughs> to be yeah. continued. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, what other guitars you got on the road yeah, with you? Yeah, let's, uh, let's show off that Evertune, baby. So this is an LA Custom Shop version of the JBM Quadruple 9, and um, a few notable differences. Uh, the first one I'll remark on is the aesthetic. It's kind of like this yeah. black and gold sort of very like, you know, I, I consider it kind of like regal colors, you know, something uh, befit for a king, if you will. Yeah, uh, very regal. But um, my original, my very original Ibanez signature guitar, the JBM 100, was in the same sort of aesthetic, kind of like this, uh, you know, graphite black um, with the natural trim and binding and uh, gold accents, but this one is a little bit more refined. I decided to go for more of a overall black hardware with tiny gold accents versus like on my old signatures, I had these very, very bright gold pickup yeah. covers on it. So I really kind of like dialed back the gold and kind of just accented it in, you know, tasteful. Various, yeah, I think it's a little bit more tasteful and it kind of fits, um, it fits all together a little nicer, but um, we have my DiMarzio Mirage pickups, as we talked about. And this guitar is special because of the Evertune bridge. And this makes playing that G tuning that I talked about so much more, like, just fun. Because you don't have to worry about going out of tune. It'll always be in that G, that G note, especially when we're doing the open note chugging mm -hmm. or anything like that. It's really, really important for that tuning. Um, and, it, you know, it's a nice way to get a... Uh, a six string to sound like a seven string. Yeah. yeah. Um, Cheat code. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we have the lumen lays. And the one thing I like about the lumen lays on this guitar is that you can see that they have these little black rings on the outside of them. It makes it even easier to see them um, rather than them kind of like blending into the, 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 the natural binding. binding. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I opted for side dots that are brass, kind of reminiscent of the old Petrucci Ibanez. JPM model and uh, I also did something kind of cool so um, they sent it they sent the guitar with different tuners and I was like mm, I wonder if I should go with black so they sent me a set of the black ones the black hip shot tuners and so I took the the um, the nuts from the gold ones that were on it oh. and put them on the black one so I got kind of got that you know the gold aesthetic or the gold accents going on up here too so this is purely kind of like a, like a, just trying to have fun with the way the guitar looks. It it's pretty much plays identically to the, the, the blue one. So 
Uh, but yeah, that's that guitar. Right on. Now this one, this one's a Mojo machine. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. Um, again, I, I took cues from that. Uh, I took cues from this guitar to build the black guitar that I was just talking about. And again, this is another LA custom shop that is modeled after my my production model signature. But um, this actually has uh, my Titan in it. Okay. So this is a guitar that has the previous Demarzus that I was using in it. Uh, hip shop bridge again, two tone like gold saddles, black bridge, um, and this I believe is a Demarzio chopper. Um, I was still trying to figure out exactly what interested me it, with their hot rails, the, the stuff they offered with hot rails, mm -hmm. and so I sort of modeled my new Mirage neck pickup after the chopper. Kind of like um, a starting point. Yeah, exactly. Because I wasn't too familiar with. It's not too often you get to play pickups like these, so like I really had to try a couple different ones. I think I tried the Cruiser before that. Um, again, um, I think what makes this... There's two things that I think that make this guitar really special. Um, it's the satin or matte uh, metallic red finish. And I, I don't quote me on this because I know nothing about painting guitars, <laughs> but I think there's like a layer of gold on to make it that is what makes it metallic. So it's like this gold and then this red on top of it. It just came out so sharp. Yeah. Um, just a really, really beautiful red. And then the other thing I think is special about this guitar is the roasted uh, flame maple fretboard. So I've always been a fan of that, and I just think it looks really sharp. It came out really good. They yeah. used a really nice piece of wood on it. It really bounces off with yeah. the red matching headstock and body, too. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I, I agree with that. And, uh, again, hip shot tuners in gold. And then... Um, yeah. Oh, one other thing that I've been doing on my guitars lately is like everyone knows it's so hard to get to the truss rod and like some guitar companies now put the truss rod yeah. access here. I still have my truss rod access up here, but now I have a little door, you know, <laughs> so you can, just, you can be like, hello, <laughs> I want to, I want to adjust the, the neck now. And then the door opens and there's a little gnome in there and he lets you, uh, mess with his nut the little <laughs> the little intonation troll <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so that's that one really pretty to look at yeah. i like looking at that one and then um there's a like you said earlier in the first one that the blue it has a real your guitars and their colors have like a real muscle car vibe. yeah yeah i've been i've been kind of um geeking out on cars with misha lately and uh i've been kind of that's modeling. a dangerous habit knowing yeah. what he likes to ride in yeah yeah it is <laughs> it is very dangerous on the old pocketbook uh, and then lastly, this, and you can tell, this has been with me for a while. It's got some uh, battle damage, got some scars there, and it's, uh, it's starting to turn a little like dingy from all the venues and the haze and stuff that it's it It's gone from matte white to rat white. Yeah, I think it has uh, some spittle on it from yet last night. But um, this is a LA Custom Shop 7-string that was modeled after my JBM, my original JBM signature line. And this guitar is so special. I, I bring this with me everywhere. Still has the Demarzio Titans in it. I'll never change those out. Um, Hip Shop Bridge. This used to be a beautiful, like, pristine matte white, but now it's, uh, like you said. <laughs> um, Just this, some years on it. Yeah. Um, and this doesn't have loom inlays on it. So actually, I had an issue, might have been yesterday or the show before that, the lights were like wigging out and I have to play this part where I'm finger picking like a lot of these like triads mm. and I couldn't see what I was doing and I was like kind of like losing my place. So I'm like, oh man, I really need to do a seven string with some lumen lay in case that happens again. But uh, other than that, um, yeah, this, uh, take this off, fret wrap. Um, this is before I, you know, had the little uh, yeah. truss rod gnome living in the headstock and uh, yeah, but you know, Again, this guitar is very special. I love this guitar. Not much else to say about it. I mean, I think I probably talked about this one on like the last yeah, the video, last so. one in twenty seventeen. Yeah, but that goes to show you, you yeah, know, I'm hanging on to it. Yeah, but that's really all I got. Unless you have uh, anything you wanted to ask about the rig or anything. No, like I was going to say that I know Misha's going to be on later on this episode. He's going to kind of walk everyone through the whole setup because you have like a mirrored setup up there, right? Yeah, With me and Misha Invicta. have the same. Same rig, like we both use the same amp, and even the same settings through the fractal too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'd say like our tones are pretty close. Uh, Mark's is slightly different, um, and uh, we run kind of like a um, 
and we talked about this on the other the old video too, where we go direct to the PA and we also have cabs on stage so we can do old school and new school. Yeah, right. and you guys still have the same setup. I saw the cabs were loaded on stage. Yep. You still have the Invicta mm -hmm. cabs and stuff. Yes, exactly. Now, are you guys running, I'm sure you're still running in-ears too, right? Yep. Yeah. Because like we just did one with Under Oath, which I'm sure is already online, and they are running no cabs, just side fills and in-ears. You guys still want to have air on stage, speak cabs, but yeah. in-ears kind of get both a perfect sound for what you're hearing in the mix, but then also yeah, exactly. feel like a rock band in 1988. Yep, exactly. And uh, we also um, do side fills. I'm glad you mentioned okay. that. Um, because we don't have a bassist with us right now. And in order to kind of get that bass sound on stage, we have it pumping through the side fills. As All well right. as, like, we have tracks going to the front of house and going through the side fills. And, yeah, we try to create as much sound on stage as possible because those people up front are really not getting the full sort of... Yeah breath of the sound so if you don't do that so. while we peaked before we let you go i noticed that uh, all you guys actively roam stage misha was out in the field the singer was out in the 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 were you know mm -hmm. standing room general general missionary where you guys are just trying to find dead spots or just to see how it sounds within the room and everything i think like uh, they're both doing the same thing within the realm of their instrument yeah um, and trying to hear how it gets translated from stage to the crowd because what we hear in our ears sounds great and we can like really scrutinize and dial it in and so essentially what we're doing is we're doing a lot of guesswork when we walk out there we'll all do it at different shows yeah. but we're just like trying to figure out okay my tone sounds like this this section sounds like this and, and we're trying to figure out what the best way is to kind of get it to sound the best across you know different scenarios and so you, it's just a lot of guesswork and you know it, it that's what it takes. Yeah. You know, that's what's nice about wireless. You can go out and kind of experiment. But then, strangely, when the show starts, everything could change. And then, like, everything you thought you figured out, you know, you need to go back to the drawing board with. So it's just a constant sort of uh, flow of going out there, listening, and then going back and just, you know, doing that endlessly. Yeah. yeah. Never ends. Never ends. Yeah. Well, Jake, thank you so much. Yeah, I think we're going to talk to Mark and then yeah. Misha. Sounds Appreciate good. it. Yeah. All right. We are joined by Mark. Mark, how you doing? Good. Yeah, a bit tired last day of tour, but yeah. uh, feeling good. You made it to the end of the line? Somehow, yeah. The end yeah. of the finish line, now you have to cross it with this rig rundown, but we'll get yeah. you out of here and get you to lunch quick. Yeah, yeah. So talk to us about this uh, seven string here. It looks awesome. Yeah, so this is my main uh, seven string. I use this currently uh, for the song Ragnarok in the set. All right. Um, that's a song that uh, the lowest note is tuned to an F sharp. All right. uh, and then some nights I'll just retune it for the, the next two seven string songs, which I retune this seven up to an A flat. And sometimes I'll have our guitar tech hand me the other seven, but it's just about what I'm feeling kind yeah. of at night. Yeah, yeah. Um, what else should we know about this guy? The pickups? Yeah, this is a very, very special guitar uh, for me, actually. So, funny story about this one. In 2016, PRS built me this. It's obviously, you know, Maryland made private stock, seven string, I guess, signature model, you could call it. Um, they FedEx it to my house, mm. it was signature only. Uh, the, the FedEx guy left it there instead of waiting for the signature and it was stolen off my doorstep oh, wow. in Austin, Texas. Um, and I posted a big thing about it. I put tons of awareness out there on the internet and um, somebody found it at a pawn shop 60 miles south of Austin being sold for 200 bucks. That's it? At a flea, yeah, it's like, or not a pawn shop, a flea market. Wow. Um, and so a cop in like South, South, South Texas, um, I think uh, Corpus Christi, he spotted it on the internet uh, and then he, he went and, and bought it, actually paid money for it, and it, it, uh, it ended up back in my hands like months later. Wow, $200 so, custom shop. $200 <laughs> custom shop, right, right, right. But uh, I was super thankful when it, was, when it was found, and I was in disbelief, honestly. I didn't expect to ever see it again. I was super, you know, heartbroken about it for a while. Um, but yeah, that's why it's close to my heart now. I, I like to tour with it and take it out as much as I can. Um, but yeah, it's a... It's it's basically it's based off my signature model that we put out in 2015. Okay. Uh, the core version, 26 and a half inch scale length, flat 20 inch radius, um, which just those two features alone kind of differentiate it from a typical PRS. Yeah. Um, here we still have the Seymour Duncan Alpha and Omegas in here. So this is my old pickup set with Duncan. Yep. Um, it's a little bit more full on than the new set we have out. We have the the Scarlet and Scourge set which came out this year. Yeah. These are high gain louder a little bit more aggressive so i use it for a song like ragnarok which if you know our discography yeah. it's pretty balls to the wall you know kick you right in the 
Wiener yeah. uh, song. Uh, I was going to say uh, Dick, but uh, I... Wiener seems good, yeah. Wiener's good. <laughs> Wiener is good. Mark Holcomb, 2023. Um, <laughs> Team, so, Team Wiener. Team um, Wiener. But yeah, those are pretty full-on pickups. It works for the song. Mm. Um, hip shot knobs. Uh, yeah. Locking tuners. It's a very special guitar for me, man. It's got like a cool charcoal burst. Yeah, um, it's stunning. Thank you, man. It's a very special guitar. And, and one that... It, it, again, is very different than the than the typical PRS seven string yeah. that you find out there. You I know? think what you and Dusty and between the Barry and me bring to the PRS like team is like a, a well needed thing that they had maybe not shined or shunned away from, but mm -hmm. you and then uh, again Dusty being added to their artist roster provides some of that needed heaviness yeah. that you guys you know spec wise, but also like visually like that guitar is like I'd be proud to have that guitar looking wise like it's a it's a stunner. Yeah, and, and you know, I'm I'm very sort of I'm I'm very proud and flattered at the fact that PRS have have been willing to move in this sort of metal friendly direction over the past ten years. Because, I mean, that was one of the things I, I broached with them ten years ago. Is like, can we do longer scales? Can we do a flat fretboard? Which I, I think, twelve inches is the standard radius on mm. a, on a, on a fretboard, which feels cool. But like, I've always been a fan of a flat fretboard of a longer scale for these types of tunings for this style of music. Yeah. And um, they've never really pushed back on that stuff. I mean, we do eight strings now. And to think of that back in 2012 when we started our dialogue was like, what? I mean, we've come a long way. Yeah. You know, um, so I've always been thankful to them for like sort of sort of riding that with me, you know, not being averse to it. Before we move on to like a six string or any other guitars you want to show off, is this something you also used with Misha on Haunted Shore stuff that came um, out? I'm pretty sure we use this for some seven string stuff, but the Honda Shorts are mostly six string. Oh, enough. really? We just tune like stupid low. <laughs> and I'll get to that. Do you okay. want me to bring, yeah, bust let's out? Go yeah, for yeah, it. yeah. Yeah. It'll be a good segue. Yeah. So this, this is my main six string Ooh. right now. So this is a brand spanking new 2023 model. Um, it's my new. SE guitar that we released in January. We announced in January. I'd I think. pay two hundred dollars for that guitar too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You'd be a little closer to home with this one. This yeah. one is, um, you know, it's a private stock, obviously prohibitively expensive for yeah. our people. This, I think, is like a thousand or eleven hundred bucks. Um, and you're getting the Seymour Duncan's. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is, yeah, this is just the SE model, a different version of it that we put out originally, I think, in 2016. Um, the main difference with this is the new Scarlet and Scourge pickups. So these are a little bit more um, lower output, a little quieter, but clearer. Yeah. Uh, and built for more sort of in between, like a lot of mid gain tones, uh, split coil tones, which I do a lot now in periphery and a lot in Haunted Shores. I just started like, for instance, during like a big heavy riff. Instead of going full bridge, which always sounds cool, it's like a classic ripping, you know, yeah. rhythm tone. Um, switch to a middle position, coil split, and you get this really sort of like like punchy, percussive sound mm. to it. And it's just it just feels almost like a like a bass string with gain on it, you know? Um, and I've started doing that a lot, so we decided to, to, to spec out a set of pickups that sort of um, lends itself to that sound. It's, um, like, it's like a palate cleanser because it allows you to go back to the heavy and it almost yeah. seems heavier yeah, because yeah, of yeah, yeah. you backing it off. Right. And I'm gonna take a, a page out of Perry's book and he's asked this question and I'm going to try to see if I can articulate it is that with you guys playing modelers a lot and even recording with them is that where your ear goes to when you're voicing a pickup to like how it reacts to your rig specifically yeah. and is that why maybe you went lower output than with the Omegas Definitely. or the Alpha and Omega? Yeah well, when we when we test for these pickups when we're voicing them we test the car across you know amps like we had a PRS Archon we had 5150 um, I use uh, Invective at home a PV invective, but you know, the bread and butter, especially in our live rig is just, is a fractal. You yeah. Know? Um, and I, at home I use some plugins, but, uh, that is kind of like, those are the things that do the heavy lifting for our tones. Um, so yeah. And you know, in a given night on stage, I'm playing anywhere from, you know, 40 to 60 different presets live wow. all bouncing within like, Oh, here's, um, here's a reverb delay. So tone with like, you know, with the delays lined up at a very specific BPM to match the tempo of the song. Or like, you know, a, a clean tone or a rhythm tone, a mid gain tone. And I'm cycling through very frequently yeah. since the music is so dense. So that was the main goal for me. Just like if I can sacrifice gain and have more clarity and have sort of more adaptability that lends itself to like the, the swath of tones that we're using, <laughs> then let's try and get it done. Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, in retrospect, the Alpha Omega, I think is a little bit more 
just like classic heavy hitting. You can still use it for different styles, but that's sort of its bread and butter right yeah. there. So this is this is the sort of um, the Swiss Army knife I call it. Uh, I, I love this pickup set. So I've been using it sort of for my main um, rhythm tone on this tour. God. And what should we know about uh, strings and like uh, brands and then gauges? Yeah, so I, I forget what I have on everyone now, but this one I know has a, has a horizon set on them. So uh, Misha was kind enough to let me try out some different gauges. So yeah. I forget what the gauges are in this one, but honestly, it was one of those things where we threw on the set at the beginning of the tour, and it felt so good that I hadn't even messed with it. Set so. and forget it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I had I had NYXLs like Deodaria NYXLs on one of these seven strings, but um, but no, I kind of forget what I've been using across the board. If it feels good, I just stick with it and I don't ask questions. Perfect. You know? yeah, that's yeah. that's the right answer. Yeah, but this one has the same specs. It's kind of what I described. Uh, 25 and a half inch scale length to accommodate for the tunings. Yep. Uh, flat fretboard, 20 inch radius, uh, and string through body, all the good stuff. It's blue, obviously. Yeah. It's a it's a workhorse, man. It's a workhorse. Yeah. Cool. Uh, what other instruments do you want to show off? Yeah, I have uh, only nine more. <laughs> so no, I'm just kidding. I have only a couple more. So this is the seven string version of that exact right. same guitar that I have. The only difference here is the 26 and a half inch scaling. It's one inch longer uh, to accommodate for the low tunings. Uh, this is, for the past week, this has been my backup seven. So again, it's just I just switch back and forth depending on what I'm feeling every night. Um, and uh, yeah, same Scarlet and Scourge uh, pickup set here. Again, this thing's in absolute war, uh, workhorse. And is um, the seven string available too? Like yeah. for consumers, I didn't mm -hmm. know, yeah. Yeah, these are, it, we released these uh, only a couple months ago, so. I think now you should start to see them in stores, All you right. know, depending on where you are. Um, yeah, but the thing's, this thing's a beast, man. I, I've, I've really only used SEs live for the past seven or eight years. So when I bring out the private stock, it's sort of like a way to treat myself and, yeah. like, and, and, and show it to people too, because I feel like a guitar like that should be in front of people instead of collecting dust in my bedroom. Yeah, you know? or um, in some flea market in South Texas. <laughs> that sucks, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. Um, and I have, I think I only brought out four guitars on this tour, which is not a lot typically for, for periphery, but um, this is the fourth. Um, do you see the main difference with this? Yeah, one? I see the Evertune. Yeah. What's your experience right. been playing with that? Because I know sometimes people say there's an adjustment or like a learning curve. Yeah. Um, if I'm honest, there is. It's a pretty massive one, especially if you're playing leads. Um, which I use this for the song Reptile, which is the first song in our set. Yeah. And I only use the Evertune to accommodate for this stupid low G tuning that I don't know why we started using. Well, I, I know why I started using so it. So why did you start using it? It was, I was on vacation. I was in Spain uh, like five, six years ago, and I started writing the opening riffs for a song called Reptile. Um, and Reptile was based off of this low double G tuning. So G on the sixth and G on the fifth. So you get octaves when you bar across. And it was just something I, I was like, wow, this would probably sound cool. Let's try it. It would be fun at the very least, even if it sounds like crap. Um, and within the first day of messing around with the tuning, I came up with the main riffs in Reptile. Um, and I showed them to the band months later. And we wrote, I swear to God, like a 15 minute song in a matter of like Yeah, two it's an opus. Years. Yeah, yeah. It's, it goes a lot of places. And, for me, it's one of the songs that I think I'm, I'm most proud of looking back on our, our catalog. And um, the tuning became somewhat of a, a staple for our band. Like we have a song called Zagreus in that tuning. There's a couple Haunted Shore songs in that tuning All as right. well. Um, and my one complaint with that tuning live, like especially when we first came out playing Reptile, was that the, 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 that low G was not stable. Mm. And if you were fretting anywhere, you'd feel the note wobble. And when you have three guitar players trying to sync up and sound like you know a, like one massive you know piece of machinery, instead you get notes that are like kind of in tune but kind of not, and that can be disarming as a listener. It can sound even worse in your yeah, ears. Yeah, you know? I bet you. Yeah, real I mean, transparent there. Definitely, definitely. Um, so we were just like, hey, you guys, we should do Evertune guitars, um, and it's just honestly, it's so easy and it's so convenient to hear. Or to, to be able to play these big chords and not ever have to worry about things being out of tune. The one thing is though that, that vibrato is a little different. So this is set in a way where the notes are stable. But if I if I apply a little bit of vibrato, you get the you know you get the vibrato, but it just requires more um, sort of force mm. applied, and it feels different. And I also notice a difference in the sound, huh. um, which 
you know, I, I prefer it to have things the way they are with my traditional bridge. I prefer the feel of it. Yeah. But I got to say the trade-off is almost a no-brainer because I'd rather be in tune <laughs> than, you know, play a little bit differently to accommodate the things that will allow me to be in tune. How novel. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it's just a trade-off, man. It's just like lesser two, be two evils and that one wins by, by a long shot. Yeah. Now, I know on stage you have a little bit different setup because, uh, not because, but uh, Jake and Misha are almost mirrored, yeah. if not identical completely. But you have no amp on stage and you're mm -hmm. running another Seymour Duncan product. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. want to talk about that real quick? Yeah, I'm using the Seymour Duncan Power Stage 700, um, which, again, I've been using that for seven years now. Even when they were prototyping that power amp, they sent me one to use and they were like, hey, we know you're using it. I think I was using a QSC at the time. It's using something that is not really meant to be a power amp, you know, powering a cab in a, you know, in like a, a live concert environment for yeah. a guitar player playing heavy metal. It's not really built for that. So they're like, this kind of sounds like it'd be up your alley, you know, built specifically for what you do. And I've just been using it nonstop. And what I love about it is it has, you know, a full EQ band on it. If I show up to a room and the stage is feeling like really woofy and subby, and just crank the bass the bass knob down. Um, you know, if I want more high end, easy fix. I don't have to go into my fractal and start like messing with patches yeah. that I, I could forget I did 24 hours from that moment. Um, instead, I can just sort of like tweak on the go. And in all honesty, like that's kind of all I wanted with the unit. You know, to have something to take up a single rack space, um, small, compact. I fly with it whenever we do. You know, one off fly gigs. Uh, fits in your carry on. Um, and it's just, it's really convenient. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's probably, it's probably one of those things in my rig, it's just like, I, I guess I could take out a bigger amp, but like, if I can cut down on the space, then, you know, more power to me. You know, yeah, I, I yeah. prefer to run a little bit lighter with those kinds of things. So my takeaway with our conversation today, Mark, is that uh, going to Spain is fruitful. Yes. Go to, to Spain. Uh, it sounds like it could be a business expense. Yeah, it's yeah, creative exactly. with that. And also, I need to start going to South Texas flea markets to find some guitars. Yeah, $200, pi $200 private stock maybe in your future. Yeah. Well, Mark, I appreciate yeah. your time. Thank, thank you. We're going to finish up with Misha. Yeah, thank you. All right, last but certainly not least of the gentlemen in uh, periphery, Misha Mansour. How are you doing, Misha? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Man. Uh, Easter egg on the last one we did in 2017, car bomb hoodie. What do we have today? Car bomb shirt. It's actually because I love cars, and it just says car on it. <laughs> uh, I hear this is a band. I don't know what kind of music they play. I'm just joking. I love Car Bomb, like my favorite band ever. But total accident. So yeah, total that was accident. Total accident. That is, that's true. It was, it was an accident. Well, let's dive into your guitars. You carry the most of the three, so divulge it, on your instruments. It sort of worked out that way. Um, I think I've just been dropping more and more guitars off at the, uh, at the, the rehearsal spot. By the way, am I looking at you or am I looking there? Where am I? Where we, I'm looking at everyone. Yeah. All right, we'll entertain everyone today. So we'll go chronologically through the set. So. I'm just glad to see that you have some instruments left after you did the reverb sale. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> My place doesn't look that different, and that's disappointing. Oh, okay. You know, I thought I was really clearing through some stuff, and it's, I might need to do another one. <laughs> <laughs> another purge? Another purge. It was very cathartic, though, I'll tell you that I much. Bet. Um, so th we start with uh, Reptile, which is in this weird G tuning, the uh, GGC, this is actually mislabeled, GGCFAD. And this has an Evertune on it, and uh, I'm sure Jake and Mark already spoke about that. Yeah. Like, it makes tunings like, like that work very, very well, because we can use strings that sound good. I'm using my Horizon set right here, actually. Yeah. So the, um, the progressive tension. Horizon kind of, is slowly uh, taking over the whole guitar. Hey, we're just going to do it slowly and steadily, and people yeah. won't even notice. Um, but this is the, uh, the, the 10 to 58 progressive tension set. So there's a 58 on the bottom, which you'd be like, hey, that's, that's pretty, uh, pretty light. But it sounds very good, and the Evertune keeps it in check. And when you have three guitars, if one guitar is out of tune, it's kind of a pain. Yeah. So that's the most in tune. That, like, this tour is the most in tune that song has ever sounded. It's wonderful. Um, there is something to do with the, you know, the feel and the tone of it. It, 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 it. There's a bit of a tax, as I call it. Yeah. Totally worth it. Overall, totally worth it. I love the Evertunes. So this was actually retrofitted onto one of my USA models, uh, which we offer in this beautiful silver color. These are bare knuckle Ragnarok pickups, which come with it, yep. with these carbon fiber covers. Um, I have a, a roasted flame maple fretboard, as you can see, and a, a non-flame, a quarter sawn maple neck that's also roasted here. Very good for stability, very beautiful. 
got the lumen lace side dots, which are extremely important. And yeah, Jake spoke highly of those. All my signature models have them. The, the guys have started to put them just, it's, you know, when you have a light show that isn't really catered around your visibility, <laughs> yeah. uh, this is, this is a really, really useful thing to have. I have the uh, truss rod adjustment down here. Um, our tech Vinny has been doing a great job with these, but at home, you know, you can make a quick adjustment. It's, it's very, very handy to have it there. It doesn't really require any skill to just give it a little quarter yeah. turn. Um, and other than that, I mean, this is just kind of my regular uh, uh, setup. It's a representative model. This is this is actually pulled from a store. Oh, wow. I don't I don't play anything special. I play the regular models uh, because they have to be that good. They have if you know they have to be able to withstand uh, what I would do to them on tour. Yeah. Um, I actually brought. I, I forgot I had this. This this could have ended up in the reverb sale, and I'm actually thankful that I forgot <laughs> I had it. This is the next guitar in the set. This guitar needs a little bit of love, which uh, Vinny, our, our guitar tech, brought this thing back to life. And so you're now trying it, to pawn this off on some unsuspecting fool that... I was. <laughs> I was. But but then... Well, no, here's the thing. is I knew all it needed was some TLC. Okay. Which it got, thanks to, to the main man over there. And I'm sure you would have priced accordingly. Oh, no, no, no. I would have been very unreasonable with the prices. People have paid insane amounts for this. What's wrong with you guys? Yeah, I mean, right. Thank you, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, but but all it needed was a little bit of TLC, and this thing is just this is a keeper. Uh, now I don't think I can sell this guitar ever. Um, and this is kind of like you know how Gibson would do their gold tops when you had a uh, like like you said you had a flame top that had yeah. like some marking or something, a mineral stain or something. You couldn't sell it. Yeah. So this has a very very nice uh, uh, quilted maple top. It's a five eighths inch top. It goes all the way down there, but. It must have had something there. So we gave it sort of this gold top treatment, but we did orange. Mm -hmm. And what we did is we taped off the binding so you could see it's a nice quilt top there. Believe us. Yeah, believe <laughs> it, 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 it's kind of a subtle little thing. This is the uh, Gen 1 model, if you will. Like that would be a Gen 2 USA model. This is a, based off of a Gen 1. And, uh, you know, basswood body on this one. That one's also bass roasted basswood on that one. I think this is not roasted basswood. We had just a quarter saw maple neck ebony fretboard. Ebony's harder to get these days, um, so we did, we made a few strategic uh, strategic changes, but largely the same guitar. This one has bare knuckle uh, Juggernaut seven set in this, and this one is tuned to our Ragnarok tuning because we brought back an old uh, Periphery two song called Ragnarok, which normally we do our drop A flat tuning. So you know you tune the whole guitar a half step down, and then you drop that low string. But this one this goes down to what F sharp, F sharp I think is what it is. So you Ooh. end up with that sort of eight string range, but on a seven string guitar. It's pretty unique tuning. It's the only song that we really do in that tuning kind of. So, um, but, but you know, this, this, this was supposed to just be for that song, but some, some shows I'll just retune it because the next songs are in drop A flat. Okay. You can just do a quick, quick retune. Adjustment. And ugh, this thing is so killer. I was gonna um, ask as we go through, I see stickers for tunings and I'm sure, I'm sure that applies to certain material in your guys' discography. But yeah. How do you choose what guitars go into what tunings? Do, do they all kind of work wherever, or do you find where it works and then that's where it lives? It's kind of, it's, it's a bit of both, yeah. We're, okay. we're, we're kind of experimenting. Um, this was the main seven, and this, interestingly enough, is a pro series. Once that orange one kind of came to life, I was like, oh, like this is <laughs> sweet, you know? But this was actually the main seven for the tour. So this is a Pro Series model. It's a very affordable model by comparison, but it still has roasted maple neck and fretboard. It's got a basswood body. Basswood, again, a lot of people think is a cost-cutting measure, but I just really like the way it sounds. I think it's very easy to source. You have to consider when you're sourcing guitars in great numbers, you want consistency across the bodies. Yeah. They are very consistently dense and relatively lightweight, and it makes for guitars with a lot of attack, especially when you do bolt-on construction, which I'm a very, very big fan of for the snappiness. Would you say, or where would you say it lives in comparison to Alder? So I would say it's actually probably a little bit less thin. So it's got the brightness and the snap of Alder, but Alder can sometimes sound a little bit thin and it varies. Mm -hmm. That's the problem is sometimes Alder is like my favorite. Sometimes Ash is my favorite, but sometimes Ash is very heavy and it's inconsistent. And you know, when, when Jackson slash Fender is ordering these, they're ordering trunks. They're ordering yeah. so much wood and you cut into it and you kind of find out what you've got, which mm -hmm. is why sometimes you end up with tops with like mineral stains and things like yeah. that and blemishes. 
when you're doing these small runs, it's easier to have consistency. So this is one of the factors that we're thinking of. And, and basswood, by and large, is just the most consistent across the board. It always yields a fantastic sounding guitar, which is why I always go for basswood. In the case of the USA's, we, ha we roast it. So we roast the moisture out and it gets even lighter, mm. which I like. A yeah. light guitar, I think, is a good thing. So this, again, will have the lumen lays. Um, it's got uh, locking tuners. It's got uh, this, this hardtail bridge that's a a Jackson variant of the, the hip shop bridge I use on the USA, but actually sounds, feels very, very good. Same sort of electronic setup, and I, uh, it does come with like Jackson MM1 pickups, mm -hmm. which, are, which are fine pickups. I upgraded these to my, I think I put Ragnaroks in this one. And this guitar just sounds fantastic. This one has so much mojo. I use this as the main seven. So, uh, at the beginning of the tour, it was for Ragnarok and for the A-flat songs okay. as well, which are the two new periphery five songs um and this this color is pretty cool too it's like this kind of sparkle blue blueberry burst. burst so it's blue on the back silver on the front and kind of bursts into that blue is my favorite color so it all ties in nicely but but this is a very very special guitar i think you can get this for like 950 bucks damn it's, it's for, for for the for the price it really is phenomenal and you still get the 20 inch radius which is kind of unique to my models inspired by alan holdsworth one of my favorite guitarists and it's very, very good for uh, moving about the fretboard. <laughs> Getting busy. <laughs> Absolutely. Now I see, uh, do the straps come with all the guitars? Because I see uh, a similar theme here with the Planet Wave straps. They, they only used to come with the USA models. I think we're out. I think they're done forever. Oh, so you're, like, I was just being kind of a smart ass. You actually were sending them with the straps. Only the USA models. Okay, wow. And 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 they're they're, they're kind of weird and gaudy, but people seem to like them. I don't even notice a strap. A strap is pretty utilitarian yeah, for me. Right. It just needs to be comfortable. Um, these all have the Dunlop dual design strap, which is very very handy, because then let's say I don't have this strap, or in the case of this guitar here, you can just put a regular strap on this. Here we've got a sort of locking uh, piece there, which, yeah. which helps. But like, you can either have the proprietary system, or you can use. A regular strap and it'll work on it. It's not like the uh, DiMarzio kind where you have to have one of yeah. those uh, that works, you know. Um, and then um, I've been using these two guitars. So what are we missing here? Which which one's this? This is a Silver Surfer. Did we started with him? We didn't. I totally forgot I had this on tour. Oh, why, well, Vinny? Why am I not using this one? <laughs> because the other ones shred. Is this one sick? Oh, it's totally sick, but the other ones are sicker. I think I used this one for the, you know what? I think I got this one from, no, I know what guitar this is. Okay. I recorded like all of P4 and I think P5 with this guitar. Yep. Yeah, that's why I brought, this is a really, really good, it's probably the best sounding, I need to figure out a way to get this one back on my trip. <laughs> this is a recording guitar. It's a really sick guitar. Um, I got that one for the Blood Eagle shoot. And it just, it was just a mojo guitar. It was like the best sounding seven. Um, this one, <laughs> feel how lightweight this is. Very, very lightweight wow. guitar, right? Yeah. Um, this one is in satin Ferrari red. So you're seeing variations on a theme here. USA model, six string. This one's tuned to drop C. It's for the last song in the set, Marigold. And um, this thing just shreds, man. I don't know, Vinny, you got this one hooked up. Yeah, that's easily the best playing six string I've played in. It's just so easy, and like, there's a couple noty bits, like the end of Marigold's a little little involved, and it's nice to have a guitar that you're not fighting. This guitar is very, very easy to play. I love the adjectives you're using for your own music. It's like, a little involved, like, you guys' music's very complicated. <laughs> there, well, there's certain riffs that yeah. are just like, ah, oh, man, this is a lot, you know? <laughs> so, so it's nice to have a guitar that, that's working with you as opposed to fighting you. And, and this guitar, uh, also it's lightweight, which yeah. sounds better, it's easier to move around on stage. It's just, again, these are all like sort of mojo guitars, which I know is a term that gets thrown around, but these are made of wood. Guitars are different. You build 10 guitars to the exact same spec, they'll all yeah. have a little bit of different character and you'll probably have a favorite. Um, the, the, there's a lot of favorites in here. Um, and, and this guitar, this guitar has been a, a workhorse. It's starting to show a little bit of a road rash on it, but like, you know, it's served me very well over the years. It's gonna stay a live guitar. I love this color. This was kind of dedicated. I'm a big Formula One fan. Ferrari started doing the matte finish on their Formula One cars, and this is matte Ferrari red. Uh, though I probably shouldn't say that because Ferrari will sue me, so it's just Italian red. Italian <laughs> red. General, general Italian red, let's say. We, uh, Harry and I were fortunate enough to go out to 
uh, Corona and got to hang out with Joe and Pat and oh, Jackson. Okay. Yeah. So oh, yeah, they make some some serious guitars. And and their 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 paint situation and yeah. paint job there is very very, you know, like like it's comprehensive. You could get any color. Yeah. They, they they love to experiment with finishes and the quality of the finishes is really top notch. And there's like a lot of crossover with the car world, like just the attention to detail and like how in depth they get with the quality of the the colors and the finishing and all mm -hmm. that. So that makes me very happy as a car guy, you know? Yeah. Um, last but certainly not least, this is another USA, and this one is the other philosophy. So when, when, we, uh, when we sort of did the Gen 2 of the USA models, we split it up into sort of the basswood-based ones, which I actually think sound better. I'll tend to record with or whatever. These are a little bit heavier. Feel how much heavier that one is. Yeah, substantial. To, well, it's because it's got a mahogany body on it, and it has a 5 8 inch maple top, uh, flame maple top. You can see it's so thick it even extends uh, wow. that far there. Um, uh, roasted flame maple fretboard, roasted cortisol maple neck, um, and juggernaut pickups on this one. So the idea being that this one would be a bit more contemporary with the Ragnarok pickups, which are a bit more aggressive. Okay. Again, passive bare knuckles in both cases. The juggernauts are more of a uh, precision tool. It's like I always say like this is a bit more of the sledgehammer. This is the this is the scalpel. Okay. This is the, it's it's an unforgiving pickup, but but very rewarding, and it rewards a, a dynamic right hand. And I tend to pick very hard, so I do like these kinds of pickups where it feels almost like the uh, your right hand is the volume knob. You know. Got it. Um, and and this one is uh, the Laguna Burst finish again. Big fan of blue, so we've got this sort of blue burst over a beautiful flame. Flame top. There's a whole flame situation happening here. I don't know if you can see well on the cameras. Um, but other than that, you know, it's the, the electronics are the same. Uh, just go. All the guitars have the same electronics. Where uh, bridge humbucker, neck humbucker, middle, and then split inner coil, split outer coil. Very very useful settings for any of the mid gain clean stuff. Um, you know that spanky sort of stratty tone. Uh, and speaking of stratty tones, I have. Uh, a, a Jackson SoCal Strat. They hate it when I call it Strat, but it's totally a Strat. Yeah. Which is my Sleep or Dad Rock Strat guitar. Sleep I didn't bring it because they're so sold out everywhere. And again, I just get the store guitars. Um, that they're, they're sold out everywhere. And I didn't want to take mine because mine is the first prototype. And I was like, if anything happens, I, you know, I'd be very, very sad. Yeah. But that's the only reason I would be playing that. I've used that on the albums. I use that for Haunted Chores. It's a deceptively heavy guitar. Uh, heavy sounding. It's a yeah. lightweight guitar, but very heavy sounding and very versatile. I wish I was using it on the road, but unfortunately, I did not want to risk it. But uh, this is what I got sent instead. Was a nice USA model, very very beautiful guitar, very easy to play. And sometimes I, I think uh, Vinny was working on the red one, so this was my drop C guitar, my CGC FAD guitar for Marigold, and it is a very very solid feeling guitar. The extra weight, I guess, yeah. adds to the solidity. But uh, yeah, as far as the guitars, that pretty much rounds it out. I think I have uh, another one around here somewhere, but I don't know where it is, and I don't want to look for it. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, now let's cover. We let this to this point uh, with Jake and Mark, where they didn't really go into in depth about the fractal stuff. So this is where we want you to uh, really dive deep on what you're using on stage in conjunction with the PV. Absolutely. So we are still on the Fractal Axe FX 2 XLs that we've had for, God, like six or seven years now. Uh, trusty workhorses. I really hope I don't jinx it by saying things like that. I got knock oh, on. Oh, it is the last day of tour. some wood, you know? It's the last day of tour, so I think you've survived. But like, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's what they're using. It's what everyone's using. It's either that or Axe FX 3. We will upgrade to the Axe FX 3. It's just a pain because we have a system where our laptop's doing all the patch changes for us. It's sending MIDI out to all our Axe FXs, which is controlling the patch changes, the scene changes, the tuners, any CC controls for like, um, let's say whammy effects or, okay. or anything that you have an expression pedal, you could draw in as a line in our, in our DAW. And we're using Cubase for that. That's, that's getting sent out to every Axe FX. So because we have a wireless system uh, for the ears and for our guitars, we can stand anywhere on stage. The changes happen at the right time. We are all playing to a click. So as long as we don't lose the click, which doesn't really happen unless something goes terribly wrong like, yeah. with the system. Um, I'll give you a sec. I'll give you a second while you work. No, 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 no. Could be in the video. <laughs> hey, sorry about that, guys. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> it's all right. It's all good. <laughs> Why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Andrew Gumis. I'm the tour manager for the band Under Oath. What do you know about Fractal Audio? Uh, 
just about nothing, to be honest. He was telling me about his whole rig this morning. God damn it. You were talking about the uh, processors. Yeah, I've got Ableton Lite. Uh, oh, yeah. dollars that came bundled with some software for my iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> He's he, he is my north star in this entire situation here. Tone star. Tone star. Here to, here to guide you in yes. any way that I can. Thanks for being here. Of course. You know what? Thanks for stopping by. Let's I'm get gonna, a hug. I'm going to miss you, dude. I'll miss you too, Thanks buddy. Thanks for taking great care of us, man. <laughs> Nothing but love here. My pleasure. My pleasure. Oh, we've been having the I'll best time. you guys time. too. Enjoy. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for stopping by, buddy. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah. Where were we? Laptops, we were talking, MIDI. diving into MIDI and why you have like genies in a bottle up on stage. You know, yeah, well, I mean, like, of two amps, bro. Well, we do have two amps. It's true. We do have two amps. We're not using them. We're not miking them up. We're using them to fill out the stage sound yeah. because it's nice to have some stage sound. So we're going through uh, the PV Invective and some cabs, yeah. some Invective cabs. We're going. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm splitting. The, the main out is going to the front of house with a cab sim on it, which I think is still like our old like juggernaut cab sim that we've been using forever. And then we're getting a split of that without the cab sim that goes to the power amp return, right? The, 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 the effects loop return of the invective. So that's just going through the cab and it's nice. It sounds great. Uh, that amp was actually designed to work very well with modelers, have kind of a flat response mm -hmm. for, uh, for anything that you plug into the power amp. So obviously works very well in that situation it's nice sometimes you know with in-ears you don't really have a lot of vibe uh you have a lot of resolution you can hear exactly what you're messing up which is yeah, a yeah. lot but every now and then for certain parts i'll sort of pop them out a little bit it's nice to have the stage sound then, then i'm very very grateful to have the cabs on stage they sound very good mm -hmm. if the side fills going and then you can kind of like you know close your eyes or get into the vibe a bit more so it's nice to to be able to switch between the two and then there's certain parts where I really want to have those in i can hear everything perfectly and the whole setup is kind of automated, so we don't have to hire too many people because, you know, back in the day, bands would have people just switching stuff yeah. for them, you know, or doing a lot of the stuff behind the scenes. Now we have Mr. MacBook doing everything for us. As long as it works well, then, uh, then the, the whole set runs uh, very airtight. Uh, it's all sort of set to, uh, like, it's in Cubase. We have an arranger set up, so we know exactly how long our set is, which yeah. is kind of nice, too. So we are on the rails, which, you know, has its... Uh, pros and cons mm -hmm. but one thing that is nice is that we know exactly from when we hit spacebar what time will be done it makes it very very easy to keep a tour running at exactly the same it's time it's a tidy package absolutely now what are you using for like uh like amp sims or anything like that when it comes to effects and patches i'm sure you have an abundance of sounds that you're using throughout the set but what are some key things that people can reference to your so sound using the, the the i think it's the pvh 6160 their 5150 model the, the invective is based off of a 5150 circuit. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a circuit I like very much. It saturates very nicely. If you do any of the sort of like palm mutes, so what we, you know, we, we obviously talk about gent, but um, I've heard that these, purr, up these purr as well, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's not a genre, yeah. but like um, it's a lifestyle. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, but I, I like this purry quality. I like it when the low end sort of saturates and a lot of the sort of Marshall style amps They'll be very tight, and you'll be like, oh, you don't even need a boost on this, but they don't have that low-end saturation to them. So the 5150 circuit does that very, very nicely. We like that a lot. It's sort of used for effect with a lot of our riffs and sounds, you know. So that's that's our sort of bread and butter. We have a Tube Screamer thing, um, T808. Um, it's... The, the, the new Axe Factory actually has a model of the precision drive, the Horizon device oh, precision nice. drive in it. So when we upgrade to Axe Factory, we could just use a precision drive, which is, which is very handy. But some sort of boost in front of it, which basically helps counteract like the thicker strings and the lower tunings okay. that we're using and helps that, that the amp sort of still sound genty and tight and crunchy, right? Uh, clean tones, it'll be somewhere, something like uh, the Shiver Clean or the, the Sir Badger. Okay. Um, I think if you looked at our patches, you'd realize they're not nearly as complicated as you think. It's literally, especially just going to front of house, be like um, uh, overdrive, amp, cab sim for rhythm tone and like the gates, you know? Yeah. And then we'll, we'll have scene changes for things like, one thing that we do that is kind of cool is we have sort of three levels of tightness and it's activating like different levels or settings of the gating as a, as a scene change. So if we need a super tight part, we could just have it switch rather seamlessly to that but then when you want it to saturate and you want it to ring out, it can do that. And, and this is just all happening in real time. And we can fine tune that riff by riff. Wow. And that's how we can get the tight parts sounding really, really tight without compromising the, uh, the, the parts that need, you know, sustain. Some air. 
exactly. Um, so it, it gets really, really nerdy, but uh, but we, we like to we like to see what we can get away with with that kind of stuff. Now, what do you compensate in signal wise with not having a bass player on tour right now? Is is that anything that gets incorporated to what you're laying out on the uh, fractal stuff? So we've been doing the same thing that we've been doing since Nolly left. Nolly was our bass player. We sort of made a bass tone with him. Yeah. And we just use his tracks, so it just sounds like him. I always find it funny when people are like, "Yeah, you can't hear the bass line anymore." It's like that doesn't actually make sense because <laughs> you're just hearing him, but in better quality and more consistently. Yeah, and it is very, very loud, both out of front of house and in our ears. Yeah. It's, you know, bass is a very important part of our sound. It's a very impor uh, important part of periphery sound in general. Um, so there's, we're, we're just hearing an extremely high fidelity version of Nolly's bass um, every night in our ears, you know, and that's what we're locking into as well. And there's a ton of it coming through the side fills, a ton of it coming out of front of house. And is Jake's uh, setup completely identical to what you're doing? With it's, maybe some minor differences? There are minor differences because Jake's style and Mark's style and my style, they're all different. And this is where, you know, I'm sure you've experienced this. If you played someone else's rig, yeah. or you see their settings, it works for them. It doesn't work for you. It's like everyone's very picky. Everyone's style lends itself to a certain setup. So, for example, Mark is, has a very bright style. Like if he plays the guitar, it's just brighter. So he'll have less, less presence, less treble on his patches just in general. Mm. And we'll kind of compensate for that. And uh, Marquitis, our front of house, might even compensate for that on his end. Uh, Jake's actually probably goes to, uh, probably got the most sort of neutral out of all. Of it. He's sort of the Goldilocks, like we just everything. There's no really any harsh harsh frequencies, okay. and I can have a bit of a bright style, but not as much as Mark. So we're all catered to just how we sound, how our guitars sound, and even some of the choices we make with our guitars are kind of geared around the fact, like Mark on his revi revised pickups went for a little bit darker pickups because he realizes how bright his sound is. Yeah. So we'll make slight tweaks, but they are generally the same philosophy. Got it. Yeah. Well, Misha, I can't thank you enough for tank hanging out with us and uh, joining us oh. on another rig rundown. Thanks for having me. I love Car Bomb. And I love the drum rundown.